What's up everybody, it's your boy Nate. Today we have another super sick motion graphics tutorial. Okay, wait, maybe I shouldn't say sick. Uh, okay, we have a super dope motion graphics tutorial for you. We are going over an effect and animation technique I think every motion designer should know not only because it's super fun to do But because it is also really really useful once you start getting into doing motion graphics Maybe even for like a career or even just for fun You're probably gonna get asked at some point or if you're like me multiple times over and over and over again Can you make text right on screen if you guys did not subscribe already? Make sure you go ahead and hit that subscribe button turn on the notification bell because we're going to be going over how to do this in five four three two one let's go When I first started doing titles and logo animations, I would get asked all the time, Nate, can you make text right on screen? You know, like it's being written. It looks super simple, but surprisingly, there are not a lot of templates or scripts out there that do this specifically. Most templates don't actually write on. Instead, they do this little cop out technique where they do like this Harry Potter reveal text fade. All that is is just animating the opacity by a character. But what I wanted to do is actually look like it's being drawn on the screen. So that means like, whoosh, you know, kind of like that. This is pretty much called the write on effect. It's super fun, really useful, really versatile. And we're gonna hop right into it. So this is a part where you're gonna wanna sit back, relax, take a hit, do whatever you need to do to get in the zone because we're about to learn how to do this in five, four, three, two, one. Okay, so the first step before we even hop into After Effects is actually to find a font or a typeface that we wanna animate. Now you can pretty much pick whatever you want. The effect is gonna work. But if you want the animation to reflect the design, then let's go ahead head and have a brush or calligraphy font as the one that we're choosing. So one of my favorite places to get fonts from Google fonts or defont.com. You can pretty much use whichever, but for this specific effect, I'm just going to be using defont.com. On defont.com, there's so many fonts that I just love where I end up downloading them all and then forgetting which ones I have and then downloading some more. So today we're going to try and not get lost in the sauce of fonts. <laughs> What the f the loss in the sauce of fonts. And I urge you not to download everything and instead let's just stick to a nice handwritten or I think they even call these brush fonts on the website. We can go ahead and click on this little area here to preview whatever text it is that we want. I'm gonna go ahead though and choose this red rock font because I think it looks pretty good. It looks like a font that was drawn on and that's exactly what we're gonna do to it. So I'm gonna go ahead and click download. I'm gonna extract it, I'm gonna open it, and then I'm gonna install it. And once I have all that out the way and Red Rock is installed on my computer, then we can hop right into After Effects. Bam, so as you can see from right here, I am in the composition window. This is where we're gonna be working on the project. Okay, so first thing to do in After Effects before we even make a composition, let's go ahead and click save this project all the way up here in the corner and we're gonna save this project. I'm gonna give it a name. The reason why we're doing this is because if we're working on this project and After Effects crashes, we want it to auto save and auto save only works once you save the project for the first time. Trust, I've definitely worked on projects for like three hours when I first opened After Effects and then the thing crashed and I completely forgot to save it and then I cried for about three more hours and then I went and redid everything again. So don't let that happen to you. Just go ahead and save from the very beginning. Okay, so now that we have it saved, we're all good. We can go ahead and make a new composition. You can make this whatever you want, but I'm gonna make this uh, 1920 by 1080 and I'm gonna leave this at 24 frames per second. You can again up the frames per second if you want it to look smoother. I think 24 is pretty decent and I kind of like the stop motion -y vibe. And then also, uh, I'm gonna keep it only down to about five seconds because I don't need this to be super, super long. Once all those settings are set, you can go ahead and click OK. Let's hop into the composition. And the first thing that we're gonna do is make the text. So to make text in After Effects, we're gonna go all the way up here to this really cool T looking icon that has these serifs on the end. And that is our type tool. So with this, we can do all kinds of stuff with text such as select it, edit it, create it. And there's multiple ways to create text. The first way Way to do it is to just click anywhere in the composition and you're going to get this red line that pops up showing that you can start typing in text or we can also click and drag and that's going to create a bounding box for the text so that means this text is never going to cross outside of that rectangle or square whatever shape you draw and then the last way is just to go into the timeline right click in there and then click
like create text. There's kind of like benefits, you know, to whichever way, but honestly, you can do it whichever is easiest for you. So I'm just gonna click inside the composition and I see that this red line pops up. So I'm gonna type in some text. So yeah, let's go ahead and I'm typing in stay dope, pretty much like my mantra for life. Right now I can't see anything because by default this text is black and my background is by default black so I can't see anything. But not to worry because this is a super easy fix, I'm just going to double click on the text to select everything. And then I'm gonna go up here in the top right corner and I'm gonna click on this white rectangle. You're gonna see my cursor change into an eyedropper tool and bam, just like that, the text is now white. Now we can also change the text to whatever color we want it to be by double clicking on this square. All of a sudden we get this window that pops up that has all the different colors. For this, I'm gonna go for a nice kind of yellow on black look. By default, you're also gonna notice that this font is looking super wonky and that's because I have not set the typeface for it. So let's go ahead and change the typeface, which you can find in the character window. Now, if you don't have a character window by default, you can go all the way up here to window and then click on character and that's gonna pop up your character. And while we're at it, let's also go ahead and add this super useful window, which is called a line. I pretty much use it all the time. We're gonna get into it in a second. And the last thing that you can go ahead and add is the paragraph tool. Since my text is pretty much only one line, it's just two words, stay dope, then paragraph is not gonna really relate that much to what I'm working with. But if you're working with a lot longer text, this is gonna become one of those things that you're gonna need handy there. So let's go ahead and just dock these off to the side and over here in the character window you're gonna see all these different options for your text you got things like the font style you have faux caps you have faux italics you have the font size you have the kerning and this is gonna be the main window that we're gonna be working in right now I'm gonna click on this button right here and it's gonna pull up all the different fonts I have installed and I'm just gonna type in red rock if I have my text selected and I type in red rock over here then my text is gonna change to that font selected which is red rock and bam already this looks 10 times better but i still have a huge issue which is the placement is just all over the place and i can either click and drag in here to make the text nice and centered but it'd be a lot easier by using this align window that we opened up earlier and click on these two buttons which is the horizontal and vertical align and we're going to make sure that's set to the composition so that everything is nice and centered in the composition all right so that's looking pretty nice I can also check its position relative to the safe margins by clicking on this guide button down here. And yep, that's looking pretty good. So whenever we change the font or the font style, we're most likely gonna also have to change its position, just depending on wherever its anchor point is set or however the paragraph style is set. And that's why I normally keep the align window up docked on the side as well, cause these two buttons come super in handy. So I'm just gonna go ahead and keep adjusting this font a little bit, making it exactly how I want it. And I'm going back and forth between the size and then changing the horizontal and vertical alignment. Okay, so this position Position looks pretty good now let's go ahead and animate this bad boy okay so the way that this is gonna work is I'm gonna make a mask and mimic the motion it takes to write each letter that means I'm gonna go all the way up here to this pen tool it looks kind of like a fountain pen and this is gonna be also what helps us make masks now the one thing to keep in mind is that I don't want to close any of these masks these aren't being used for masking things these are actually gonna be used for another effect that we're gonna talk about in a second and you also don't have to make things super perfect you know you can kind of have fun with it just kind of get things generally in the center of each letter and also keep things in order of how you want the things to be written I'll show you what that means right now I'm gonna make sure that I have my layer selected my text layer selected and I'm also gonna have the pen tool and I'm gonna go ahead and click right here in the corner of this letter and then start drawing inside of the letter, making sure that I'm kind of covering the general area in the middle. Now, if you want the lines that you create with the pen tool to be curved, you just have to click and hold it down, and then all of a sudden, your straight line will become curved or bezier line. Okay, so we're gonna start with the first letter, and I'm drawing inside of the shape of each letter, making sure that each point is following the path of the letters as if we're writing them. It's okay if it's not super perfect because it's pretty much just gonna be a reference for another effect and as long as we try to keep it somewhat in the middle I, I think we should be good take your time really enjoy each stroke <laughs> 
So if we need to mimic the pen or pencil lifting up, we can do that by just ending the mask that we're working on and starting a new one. To do that, I can click on the timeline and then reselect the text layer, or I can also select another tool or press the F2 key. So let's go ahead and speed this up until we have all of this text sketched out with the pen tool. Now, if you close off the mask accidentally, you're gonna see everything go black, just like it happened here. And so I choose to leave them open to make my life easier. But if you ever run into this problem, you can also change the mask, the setting from being add into none, and that'll just make it so that the mask doesn't actually mask out any of the footage or any of the text that you're working on. Okay, so that's looking pretty great. We can turn on and off our masks with this little icon. That's just gonna let us preview where these are generally placed. So now with that same text layer selected, we're gonna right click and go all the way up to generate. And this part might be super confusing because After Effects comes with its own built-in right on effect, but that is not what we're doing. That one is like way more confusing and honestly, I don't like it at all. And most people don't even use it for doing this effect, but instead we're gonna go to stroke and this is the one that you wanna use, it's stroke. Go ahead and click on stroke and we're gonna go into the effects control window and you're gonna see all these different options but for the most part we only have to worry about three options which is the brush size the end and then the paint style okay i lied there's actually four you can also mess with the brush hardness all of them are pretty cool but th those are pretty much the only ones that we're gonna have to mess with oh shit, actually we, we gotta go into masks as well okay so next we're gonna go into effect controls and we're gonna change it from using only one mask which you can see by it saying mask one using all the masks which is this checkbox right here and then we're also going to make sure that stroke sequentially is checked and that's just going to make sure that every letter is being written on one at a time instead of all of them being written on at the same time now the last thing that we also need to do is go down to paint style and change it from on original image into reveal original image so these two values of start and end should be what we use to animate the text writing on but if we go through and scrub forward, you're gonna see it looks kind of off and that's because our brush size is too small. So let's go up to brush size and increase it a bit. Not so much that it's like bleeding into every letter in the text, but big enough so that it covers enough of the letter, small enough so it doesn't cover all of the letters. All right, so these values are gonna kind of vary depending on what you set for your text earlier on. So that's looking pretty good. And as I change this end value from 100% or 30% and move it back and forth from zero to 100 and zero to 100, you're gonna see that the text is writing on and every little thing looks pretty good. Actually, it's, it's kind of fun to mess with. It's just like, boom, 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 boom. <laughs> Once you have this, you are pretty much set to start animating it. So I'm noticing actually, as I'm scrubbing through back and forth with this end value, that I'm getting a little bit of spill over by this T here. So all I'm gonna do to fix that is go back into the pen tool again and move this mask point over just a little bit so that it doesn't show up right away. Just like that, cool, it looks pretty good. Now I'm moving over again and I see that the P, it happens to as well. So let's just fix that really quick. For whatever text that you use, you can go ahead and if you have any little messy points in there, just look back in your mask paths and change them slightly back and forth. You know, you're gonna have to fidget with it just so it looks clean. You can also note that most of these effects are happening in like less than, you know, like three seconds or two seconds. So people aren't gonna process all of your little errors as easily but it is pretty nice to have it perfect for if it's something like a logo animation or something that you want people to really like pay attention to for a different style of effect instead of it looking all feathery smooth when it gets written on I kind of like it to also look hard so I'm going to go into the brush hardness as well and change it from this like 70 75 percent to 100 percent that's going to make things look a lot crisper and choppier once they get animated on so now it is time to lock in some animation keyframes. For the most part, we only have to worry about animating one value from this, and that is the end percentage. So I'm gonna move my playhead all the way back to the beginning of the timeline. And I'm gonna press this stopwatch icon, which is gonna let us start animating the end value. <laughs> We're gonna go ahead and set end to 0%, and that's gonna make it so none of this image is revealed. Next, I'm gonna scrub forward to the timeline, move my playhead to about one second, and make the end 100%. If you hit the space bar to preview it, you're gonna see it is actually getting written on. Now, it's pretty cool because we only have these two keyframes, and if you want it to go faster or slower, all you have to do is move the end keyframe either closer or further from 
from the first keyframe. So if I put this at two seconds, then it's gonna take two seconds to write. Or if I put it at 0.5 seconds, it's only gonna take 0.5 seconds to write and so on and so on. <laughs> yeah, that looks how fast I used to write for my AP class essays. Holy shit, that was difficult for a person who used to have a lisp, okay? AP class essays, yo, oh. Yeah, so most people can stop right here. You're pretty much good to go. Everything looks, you know, decent. But if you wanna take this animation to the next level, we can add a few more things like a background, a little shine, a handwritten stop motion jitter effect and brush elements to really make this animation pop. So for this, I'm gonna be using the RTFX generator, a thousand elements pack, which comes from Envato. So I've been using it for about two weeks now. So far, it saved me so much time and effort in making pretty much simple things look 10 times cooler. It has a bunch of super useful animation elements, transitions, and tools that make motion graphics super easy. It can be a huge benefit to new After Effects users still getting the hang of the program and really useful to After Effects vets that just wanna save themselves a lot of time and not have to do repetitive stuff over and over again. I really love the fact that it has this modular setup to where I could go ahead and add like different things here and there and really build out a specific kind of custom look even though I'm using something like a preset pack. All the links will be in the description if you wanna check it out. Huge thanks to Envato for sending me the pack. It was really dope. And yeah, it, it made this effect a whole lot better. So I'm gonna go over to the window and I'm gonna open up the RTFX generator. In it, it's pretty much categorized by all the things. So first thing I wanna add is a background. I can pick something kind of like this, which looks a little bit boxy. I'm liking how it looks, but hey, even if I don't like it, there's all these other backgrounds that I can just add pretty much with a double click. So pretty cool, a whole lot of room for error here. Next, I'm gonna go ahead and select one of their brush background and I can reposition everything in the timeline so that the timing looks good and once that's nice and set we're gonna select the tools to add a really cool jitter effect this one pretty much makes it look like it's hand-drawn or stop motion and I really like this effect because it's gonna make this whole animation pop another really cool thing to add which honestly probably doesn't work logically as well for a ride-on effect but visually it looks pretty cool is a nice light sweep and so again this is all just a double click press thanks to the RTFX generator. And I'm gonna go ahead to the adjustments over here by changing the length of this so that I make sure that the light sweep is sweeping over every letter as they're getting animated on. And once you have something looking nice and decent how you want it, we can go ahead and export it. In order to export it, I'm gonna add this up to the render queue and I'm gonna click on this blue text right here which is gonna let me change the render settings. So if you want the text to have no background at all, then you can actually just go ahead and change the mode to RGB plus alpha and then go back into the composition and turn off all the backgrounds and render it out. I like using transparent backgrounds a lot. I talk about making transparent background videos in another video actually on the channel. So go ahead and check that out if you're interested for a more in-depth look on making transparent background exports. How many times am I gonna say transparent background? Ugh. I'm gonna render that one out and I'm also gonna render out a few others with different background choices. Once that's done, I can pretty much use this animation however I like, you know, the transparent one. Let's just go ahead and go bam, just like that. Stay dope, you guys. So that's it. I hope you guys enjoyed that video. I can't wait to see all of the super dope text animations that you guys are gonna do. As a little challenge to yourself, I want you guys to animate your mantra and go ahead and post it on Instagram and tag us so that I can see it. Use the tag at Black Mixture, hashtag text right on. I don't know, I'm, I'm still coming up with the hashtags. If you guys did not subscribe already, make sure you go ahead and hit that subscribe button. Turn on the notification bell because we're gonna be going over a whole bunch of super dope videos that you're not gonna want to miss shoot you guys sent me like really awesome fire hand videos i'm still blown away checking out all of those but hey let's go ahead and get some motion graphics on there as well we got the vfx from the fire hand videos let's see all of you guys' super dope mantras and let's animate them on and share them with the world i'm gonna love seeing them and as always leave a comment down below let us know what you think i love reading all of the comments from you guys and i'm sure others do as well this channel is growing shoot pretty much around a year ago we had 500 subscribers and we were freaking out because we hit 500 subscribers which was a huge deal bam a year later we're freaking out because we're sitting at 50,000 subscribers so huge thanks to you guys you guys are the reason why this channel is still going on all of your comments help shape the content and make it better for you all much appreciated and as always i hope to catch you guys on the next one peace Oh, 
yeah, if you didn't know already, me and Chriselle are on TikTok. So if you want to know what I look like below the waist, and even better, what I look like dancing, and even better than that, than just me dancing, a little bit more about me and Chriselle, you can go ahead and check us out on TikTok. One of our videos hit 20K, yo, and, and I don't even like, you know, I don't, I don't even, I don't even know how to do all that stuff, yo. Yeah. <laughs>